best way to describe the goal of what we do is to create as realistic possible uh, clinical environment. So we try to um, we try to create a situation in which our faculty and learners walk into a situation that is or will be familiar to them in terms of actually taking care of patients. The equipment, for example, is very important so that the anesthesia machine we're using today is the same as the anesthesia machine that we use in our own operating rooms. The defibrillator that's in the room is the same as the one that we use in the hospital, the IV pumps. It sounds superficial, but it's really important that as much of those materials and equipment as possible are exactly what people reach for in the hospital, both so that they, um, that they understand how to use them but also so that it's an immersive, real environment for them. It's a funny thing, uh, you know, these, these simulators, I mean, when you look at them, you, you realize they are artificial and plastic, metal, and so on. But as soon as you feel a pulse and the eyes blink and the patient has a voice, um, people really become engaged pretty quickly. And the familiarity of the monitors, the sounds in the room are really important. So example, the pulse oximeter with its tone, every, that's almost a universal sound in a hospital now. So we make sure that's always there. Yeah, that wasn't too smart on my part. Oh well, all right, uh, good. Is there a problem, or is it? No, I'm just surprised at, I'm surprised at how hot that got. It's smoking. What? Where? What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, what do we do? What should we do? Turn it up. Oh, we've got a burn down here. What is it? It's from this thing. Holy is it cow. Into the area? Is it out, do we think? No. Um, yeah, that's good. Finish. I mean, I think let's not. Let's I think we not, what do you think? I think we can proceed. Proceed with the glucosystectomy? I think so. It shouldn't affect your, unless you're worried about surgical infection. I should probably put Fox's family first, though, don't you think? There are, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of simulation educators who would say that, um, that simulation is just the excuse to do the, the debriefing. That the debriefing is actually where most of the... Um, whether it is the real crucible for change in, a, in an individual. So what the debriefing period allows the learner to do is kind of clear the emotions and objectively reflect on what has happened and how they responded and most importantly how they will or will not respond in the future, what they'd like to change, what they'd rather, what they needed to know to do a better job for that patient. We know that if you don't actually have to make the critical decisions and perform critical procedures, that no amount of knowledge can overcome that lack of experience and understanding. So um, to create a situation where uh, relatively uh, new practitioners have to make difficult decisions is one of the real aces of our, of our simulation deck. I mean, we can really make people feel the, the emotional impact of making life-saving or threatening decisions, which is so much different than answering a test question.